So hey everybody, welcome back to Millie Marotta's Wild Savannah Lion. I just realised, oh I was going to do the eyes sometime, but I don't have to do that this part, I can do that another part. Uh, but yeah, welcome back to Millie Marotta's Wild Savannah Lion. Uh, I just decided I wanted to do a part on this um, quickly before bed because I am really enjoying the colouring stuff at the moment and it relaxes me so much. So. Now I need to remember <laughs> where the light source is coming from too. I think it was coming down this way, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was coming down that way. It's been so long since I've done this, I know. It's probably been about a year. But I'm excited to be getting back into it. Um, we're still going to stick with the same colours for the whole line, I'm thinking. Just to keep it, I guess, similar or same old. So you'll notice we're getting down to some of the smaller areas with the lion now and then we get to the mane so I'm not sure how much because the smaller areas can take longer sometimes but yeah I just thought why not go back why not keep going with it so as you all know um, I've got my dog at my feet here I'm just gonna have to move my foot quickly so that I can do that I had it resting against too which I like to do but Unfortunately, I need to be able to be at a good angle to use the camera, I guess, and she's just snorting at me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm basically going to starting with, this is still Prismacolor 150 set. Um, so we're starting with Sepia PC948. And as you may remember, with this, coming with darker area, and just follow along these line kind of things and then we do like a lighter area out from it and I'm just going to be back a minute I just realized I forgot something so I'll be back in a minute so hey everyone we're back I stopped it um, last night because I realized that I hadn't deleted the previous footage off the camera card and also I did start getting a bit of a headache so I went to bed had a good night's sleep and then got up at 8 a.m. this morning and it's now midday wow time flies and yeah I'm now coming back to recording this video so I'm thinking what I might focus on is more possibly these cheek areas on both sides and we may do the eyes this time we may do them next time I'm not sure it's sort of more, as you'll notice, I've done the main nose, the main part of the face where the eyes and that go. And then we're doing the the cheeks and stuff now. So, yeah, we're coming in with our Sepia PC948 Prismacolor, as you'll notice in that label. And as you know, we're going, our light sources are coming from this way, down here. And we're bringing in our pencil colour depending on that and I've got yeah little pencil marks everywhere from the prism colour oh well that's life and you may notice this stem part I'm actually not worrying too much about um, the sepia there because I'm probably going to do the the darker blacky red in that stem bit there We're just trying to get a bit of a, a dark layer of sepia, then a light layer of sepia to continue it easier with the the next colour kind of thing. Trying not to go too much over the lines too, which I tend to be doing a bit at the moment. I've also decided, like... For a bit there again I was trying to do two channels and now I've decided I'm just going to focus on my art channel because it's just, it's just taking way too much time, way too much stress, way too much pressure and I really want to get to the point with this art channel where I'm doing four or five videos a week if I can. Um, that's what I really want to aim for with this but as I was telling you in the last video too also add in like some jewellery making and all that sort of cool fun crafty stuff too and just 
build upon what we've already got here and still do the colouring books and all of that but I just I really want to build up this channel more and get more different things going with it so I've decided to basically ditch the other channel because it only had 19 subscribers I couldn't see it going anywhere after a couple of weeks and so it's like well this channel is growing it is slowly gaining subscribers and it's like and it's what I really love and want to do in my life and it's kind of my dream so I figured I'm better to focus on my dream channel than the other because my art is something that I would love to do as a career so yeah I hope you'll all stay with me on this journey and adventure and yeah it'll be great but yeah that's just what I realized that I really want to do with my channel and my life is my art stuff so yeah I've decided my priorities have always lied with this channel so that's where they're gonna stay and I'll always be here and I really want to work so much harder on getting this channel to where I want it in life well not just where I want it in life but where I want where my dreams lie and where I want to go with it and I just I love doing it anytime I pick this up and do it I just feel so happy and I wouldn't change that for the world so we're going into some really skinny tiny areas down the bottom there <laughs> And then I think with this side, because our light source is coming down this way, I don't think... See how we've got our stem down here? Down this bit here? It's just in here next to where we've put this sepia line. You can't really see it now. But it's like what you see on this side. But I think what we're going to do, because of our light sources on this side, I think we're actually going to come down like this and bring it across from this side so we're not going to have the sepia so much coming down the stem on that side I love this so much I really wouldn't change it for the world and I got my dog laying here next to me <laughs> Her ears twitched when I said that. Uh, my dog seems to like when I do my art stuff too. She just sits here beside me. Sometimes she interrupts and wants to play. I can't believe she's nearly five years old this year. So yeah, um, I'm just working out a way to do this line a little easier without going all over the place. Because I feel like that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. I'm wobbling all over the place with it. As you can tell kind of from how I've done it. And what I'm actually going to do is shift those pencils over there and I'm actually, I just realised what would help would be moving the angle of the page. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that before? I've done that all these other videos and yet this time I didn't think of it. Uh, I don't know where my brain lies some days.
I'm already feeling so much better. I was so stressing out over everything before. How am I going to do everything for this channel and deciding if I should ditch the other channel or not? And I was just so stressed and it, and I start doing this and it's like all that stress and pressure leaves and I just I feel really happy and satisfied with what I'm doing in my life and it's that tends to happen mostly when I'm coloring <laughs> and it makes me feel this is part of what I'm meant to do in my life is my art and my creative stuff it just it makes me feel so good, I guess you could say. I guess like it does for all of us. It's therapeutic, I guess. Whoops, and I went over the lines. Eh, like usual. So next we're going to come in with our Tuscan Red PC937 and as you may remember we're going to do that over every colour so you notice it isn't as sharp as it could be but yeah as you all know already my thing with trying not to over sharpen the pencil lids and waste pencil lid colours. hair all over it. <laughs> Part of that dog hair because it's just turned cold here so I'm back in jumpers and trackies and stuff like that and so pretty much with the cold change whenever I hug my dog she she likes to molt and lose hair and so I get hair all over me and that transfers to whatever I'm doing next. <laughs> it does So as you notice, this little part down here has actually already been coloured next to the leaves. So we're pretty much bringing that into an already coloured area that's pretty, pretty dark already. But as we get lower, um, some of these areas will actually get smaller and hence be more in shadow than other areas. I think from the looks of that we went to the sand colour, I think it was. If I'm remembering correctly anyway, since it's been nearly a year since I did this again last. my dog so much. Thank you. 
So also, this is from Millie Marotta's Wild Savannah too. It may be a bit, because of my lighting, you probably won't see it quite as well, but yeah. So this is just from Millie Marotta's Wild Savannah that we're colouring in this image from. And it's published by HarperCollins Australia. Because obviously I'm in Australia. As you all know. so happy. I love doing this so much. So how's everyone's weeks going? I hope you're all going well. I do. Yeah, it was the browns and the orange from what I'm looking at here. Sorry, I just had a brief look at um, which colour tone comes next after the Tuscan Red. All good. You can tell some of the brown layers are gone over to the next side with the shades, but I am not actually colouring those parts because it's not meant to be there shall we say so if you do go over the lines into the next section from where it is as you'll notice I'm, I am going over the lines a bit <laughs> well you may not be able to tell so much I don't know but pretty much if you do notice that um, just don't worry about colouring that section just keep on moving on shall we say just don't worry about feeling, feeling like you have to fill in that area then with the dark shade because that's not necessarily where we want it. So, yeah. We don't have to follow the normal rules, do we? Nah. So, I might just... It's about 16 minutes here. Um, I might just try and get in this Burnt Ochre PC943. If we don't get that finished, we'll start with the next part with continuing the Burnt Ochre. So... As you remember, bring in the burnt ochre over every colour. So as you'll notice too it does get a little quicker each time you add a bit more colour in because you're filling in more layers and just colouring over the other layers so in my opinion that makes it a little easier each time you go adding the next colour or the next layer or whichever in.
lips. <laughs> Try not to go everywhere like I just did. What's up with me today? I must be clumsy clots today. Leave that for after someone was messaging me. You might have seen that. Um, I was talking to someone from my Facebook group before and they just messaged me back on Facebook because I love talking with people who join my Facebook group and stuff, helping them out. It's one of the fun parts of doing this, getting to help others out and give them hints and tips when they want to and just find out about their lives and chat with them about mine and yeah. It's great fun. If I looked at that in the video screen, my apologies, I didn't. I just picked it up to have a look and then decided to leave it <laughs> till um, I paused briefly in between recording this to get a drink and stuff because I've noticed in some of the videos my voice gets very croaky and I think that's because I'm talking so much and not taking a drink in between <laughs> I think it is there we go we've been talking a bit about Australia So yeah, there's our burnt ochre and I think I'm going to pause and grab a drink and then we'll come back in with our orange. As you can tell, this pencil's been used a decent bit. So we're going to come back in with that next and then yeah, I look forward to continuing it. Fun, 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 fun. I feel so content when doing these videos. It's just my favourite thing in the world to do. So I will be back shortly. See you then. Bye. everyone sorry I was just checking it was focused because I hit the record button before the focus button this time I was just finishing my glass of water and I'm going to start again <laughs> pretty much um, yeah I was just speaking with the person on Facebook too <laughs> um, pretty much we're coming in with our mineral orange PC 1033 as you notice this one's been used quite a lot <laughs> so it's getting a bit short and we're pretty much coming in with that color over these. We are trying, if we can, to leave a little area for the sand color. Just if we can. Some areas you may not be able to, other areas you may be able to, but just do what you can. I also want to take this moment just to thank everyone for following and liking and just watching my videos it really means a lot to me and I really appreciate you guys so thank you so much and yeah 
I'm so appreciative to have you all here. And my dog just snorted. <laughs> she likes to talk by snorting. I think she's feeling a bit like I'm ignoring her at the minute. Because I'm recording. And then these lower bits, you aren't going to be able to fit the sand in them just because they're getting quite a bit darker. But we're still going to add every colour in over the top anyway in these lower areas just to make it work. And yeah. I'll just be um oh no doesn't matter sorry my brain's not my brain's kind of getting tired <laughs> I'm not getting quite so used not quite used to getting up early yet I've always been a night owl so yeah I'm trying to change those habits shall we say kind of difficult sometimes in our black yet in these areas too and then do our color layers over the top of the blacks oh that's a lot of um small area for fitting all these colors in sometimes i surprise myself at the amount of colors i fit in some of these teeny areas I do. So, depending, I may try and do this slightly differently. We'll see, just to do with how we get the black in and adding the extra layers because we don't want to, as you'll notice. Is, well you may remember with the other layers it kind of um, took away little bits of the other layers and you, as you added it in you sort of blended over other layers and we don't want to take away completely all our light tones in this because there isn't so many of the light tones just because of the fact that it's small spaces we're working with so we may try and do things slightly differently in this section which I guess a year ago, um, like, as I've talked about that I have improved, um, like a year ago, I guess this is an example of it. A year ago, I would have still tried to just do it over again a second time rather than thinking of a different way to do it. But it's like, I guess, little smarter and wiser now you realize that maybe things won't always work the same way so you alter them and change them slightly for different things so I guess that's things that you learn over time so it's a good improvement in that way so next we're going to come in with sand PC940 and as you probably realize we just bring that over every color But see, because there is so little light area at the top, I don't want to bring, end up bringing the orange and that over that color tone area. I want to make sure we've still got that light area. So to do that, I think I'm going to just possibly see if I can do things slightly different for where the black comes in in this part, in this bit. And I hope I'm not going over the same area, same spot for the third time in a row. <laughs> I 
I have been known to do that before. And we're still bringing that sand down into these um, dark areas as well. So yeah, as you see, there isn't like huge, huge amounts of light space. So I kind of don't want to take that over with other spots, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, we may do it the same way, we may not. And I'm just gonna sharpen this pencil quickly if I can find where my sharpener is. because the four in one sharpener is no good for the Prismacolor, so I'm just uh, losing everything again. Um, <sighs> I have no idea where my sharpener's gone. Um, I'm just going to stop for a minute while I find my sharpness, so I'll be back. So hey everyone, I'm really sorry I took a phone call and I didn't even realise I was um, puddling around continuing this whilst I was on the phone call um, when I realised I stopped. But pretty much basically all I did is our Tuscan red and our black for this centre stem area. And then I basically sharpened the black lead to a point and just did a very fine black line down like that and across. And then I did the same for the sepia, just on, cross, on top of the black and a little above it. So I'm just trying to work out exactly where we're up to with the sepia. So we're just basically um, bringing it across the little black line like this. So I figured out this way we can still do our double layer but at the same time we're not going to go taking up all those light areas either. We're not. Oops, and that might be the same spot. Oh well, now we've worked it out. And so we're just bringing our sepia over all these black sort of bits here, trying to blend it in a little bit. Now we're going to have to do the same. Pretty much you're going to need every pencil sharpened to do this one because it's such a fine, small area. Whoops, and I just broke the lead, didn't I? Yep. I did. Just don't over sharpen it like I just did. But pretty much each area is going to need some a sharp lead for it. So that you can shall we say get those details in the small areas as required. So I'm just gonna leave it at that point for now. Now we still bring it over all the other colours, but we also bring it up a bit. So, and we're not worrying about doing our light shading bit just currently in this spot because of the fact that, well, we already kind of have our underneath layers backing those, starting to back those up. So. Lily's sleeping right next to me. I love it. As I've said, I think many times this video, it basically she wanted to go outside, and then it started raining, so she basically decided to come back inside. With it's warm. So 
Do we want a bit of that Tuscan red showing above where the sepia and the black have kind of taken over that that blending kind of thing? And we're just trying to basically blend it up but at the same time still have those light areas, shall we say. Taking up quite a while on this cheek. It is. And then what we want to bring in is our uh, ochre burnt, burnt ochre PC943. As you may remember, we bring that over all those other colours. And the red does seem to be standing out a little more on this side just because of the fact that um, we haven't done that sort of blending graduation between them. But I didn't do that so much for this bit just because of the fact that it, it did have some of the colours already blended underneath through that blending graduation kind of thing. And the fact that there is so much less room for the blending graduation on this top layer. So I figured it would kind of blend in with the underneath bits more than it would. Well, it is blending fairly well with the underneath bits, but yeah. Next is Mineral Orange PC1033. I'm coming with that over all these areas. Trying to leave a little area for our sand again where we had it before.
as you'll notice so it is bringing the orange up a lot more into the the sand sort of area so which was something I was trying to avoid but I can't totally avoid because of the fact that some of these spaces have so little space in them and then lastly we come in with our sand PC940 and we basically just colour that over every every colour Even the ones without sand areas in them, we're just colouring over, as I said before. And that's our little leaf area there done, our cheek. Now what we're going to do is actually with these um, center areas just here we're just going to bring in our Tuscan Red which is PC937 and we just want to color around these areas with our Tuscan Red just fill them in since this area is now complete whilst I remember the exact color combo I used for those for the nose Slash, um, well I guess all these little areas in the nose I'm trying to remember those same colours to use for the rest of the face but in the meantime we just want to fill these in with the Tuscan Red Now what we want to do is come in with our black PC935. We want to bring that over all of these um, sort of Tuscan red areas. Make that darker. As you notice, we are getting some colour bits over some of the little point areas because it's, as you know, it's hard so colouring around small spaces and avoiding getting things in the lines kind of thing in those spaces because the area is so small and skinny that just one little bit of a hand cramp or even just a little slip, which can always happen can cause you to go in those areas. So 
So that's our black. And now I think the colours we used for these centre areas, I think, is the Tuscan Red, Ochre Brown and Mineral Orange. I am taking a guess. So what we're going to actually do is come in and I left this cheek part in shadow too because I figured it wouldn't have so much of the, the light source in this part here. But there might be more light source around some of these outer areas out here. But not so much in that area. I sort of, I guess I more want this back part of the face to be more the darker colours like this of the lion's face. Whereas this nose, because it's sort of the centre of the lion, I guess that's why I did a lot more, I guess, colour variations with the amount of colour. But so you may see some of that sort of up in these oops, upper forehead areas just because it is a bigger area. So depending on the amount of space probably depends on if I make it like dark shadows like it's between something like this one because this spot is kind of just behind the nose where the dark shadows would be too, so yeah. Anyway, I hope that explains. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually come in with our Tuscan Red and we're gonna bring that around in some of these spaces. Because we're still going by where our light source is. Next we're going to come in with our Burnt Ochre PC943 and as you know we're going to bring that over all of the Tuscan Red. And lastly, we're going to come in with our Mineral Orange PC1033. And we want to bring that in over all those colours. And there's just one little spot here we missed with the Tuscan Red, Burnt Ochre, and then Mineral Orange. And that's that part of the lion's face. So I'm just going to pause for a minute. I just want to think about where I go to next. I am considering going, actually, I'm considering kind of going around some of this lion's face, but I'm kind of got to work out the angles. So I might pause for a minute and then I might sort of think about where I want to go with the light shadows around this lion's face. And then we shall come back and we shall start laying out some details. So I will see you shortly. Hi. So hey everyone, I'm back. I'm still kind of trying to work out how exactly I want to do these um, 
shadow area kind of thing shall we say um, for the I've decided for a start I'm going to kind of work as you see with the nose work around the nose sort of areas and then um, leave all the little spots slash circles slash patterns blank for now and work around those and I'm still kind of working out if I add some sort of lighter areas out here or if I don't worry so much because I kind of feel in some ways this side would be a bit darker but at the same time there probably would be a bit of light coming out on these very outer areas where it hits um, just because of the way the light source goes it would be hitting sort of out on some of these outer areas I'm thinking so I'm just going to kind of start off with our Tuscan Red PC 937 and I'm going to just slowly work out a bit to where I think I want the Tuscan Red to go to and I think I'm going to want it to go all the way along this bit here just because of the fact that um, that will provide a bit of contrast for closing in this cheek area with the pattern and then I think what I'm going to do is actually just um, shall we say bring the Tuscan Red part up into those areas and then just part up here and kind of I guess close off some of this spot um, where shadows could be um, or where the shadows would be and work off some of that for some lighter tones in the area shall we say and so we're gonna sort of bring this up a little more there just because we're coming up into this cheek slash eye area I'm gonna work part of that up here and up here. I'm just basically trying to work around shadow areas around also the pattern where the eyes and that fall so that you still have some sort of lighter tones, lighter areas but also some of those darker tones areas. where it's required kind of thing and we also do want to put in some light sort of areas out from that we are sort of going to blend in the next color kind of thing if that makes, I, I hope that makes sense anyway kind of thing but yeah me and I think all this little spot down here I think we're going to bring that old dark red I don't know how much we'll get done of this spot just because of the fact that um, time kind of thing but I guess we'll see and we don't really want to touch too much of these um, main areas for now till we work out exactly what we want to do with them so we're not too worried about going down in those dips or anything just now or even touching the other leafy parts too much but you can sort of match them up like I just did there making sure we've got some of our lighter little sections to add colour blends into just make 
nose to this area the mauvey black here I think so I think just because um, it's sort of such a close area to the mane I think I'm gonna make most of that the mauvey black or the Tuscan red black kind of thing and we're gonna color over this small spot here And here we're going to kind of start bringing out some lighter areas. But again, I'm thinking just up here. So have more darker in these main sort of areas, I'm thinking, once we get to it. I am kind of doing this as I go though, so it may change a bit as I go. Whoops, try not to go over the circles like I just did. There's some lighter areas. We do want to add, I'm thinking like some dark areas around um, these leaves slash areas that go into the main. Just because of the fact that I feel that sort of those areas in the back of the mane will be a lot darker. Any little teeny circles I would say colour over just because the fact you're not going to be able to get much in the way of colours or whatever into those spots. Even this circle I'm going to colour over. I'm going to bring that maybe red down in, the Tuscan red down into there. And then we're going to add some like light tones so it's not going to be too much in the way of um, color variations in this little spot because there is so little space for some light areas but it will provide a little bit of contrast in that face area where the light shadows reflect which will be good Red in those spots too, the Tuscan red. So as you notice, we're sort of bringing in little lighter areas as we go, as we can. We've still got to bring it down into this part here too. Sorry, it's just breathing for a minute. Um, yeah, so we want to bring a little bit of our Tuscan red up in here while breathing and thinking because sometimes I find I sort of tense up a bit when I'm trying to work out how I want to do something <laughs> because I want it to work out well. And we're going to bring this in just a little more here in this spot. So I'm not really sure that I can explain exactly how I'm doing it because just here and there and blah 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 I don't feel as really explaining it that well but that's kind of all I can think of to show you or explain where it is so I may just quietly continue with um, I guess working on these parts and I hope it will 
I hope you'll be able to follow along. I hope you will. And yeah, I'll sort of say when we're doing the next colour in it too.
So I'm not going to worry with this little cheek area and this bit down here just for now just because um, we'll probably work on that next video. Um, I'm just going to pause it briefly because we're nearly out of recording time on this section and then we'll start up again and so I'll see you back shortly. So we're back now we're going to come in with our black PC 935 and we're not going to cover all the Tuscan red areas we just want to cover some of these sort of we just want to bring it out a little bit from where these shadow sort of areas are. So where we want some of our features and along the chin where our darker areas are basically is all going to be a bit of black in there. So all along these edges.
You may notice I'm not necessarily worried about getting every bit of red in this spot because of the fact we've still got to bring this lot down into the main area yet. And we've got to bring just a little bit of black up in through here. But not too much because we're, we're sort of, we want to bring, we still want some of our red showing in those areas. So I'm trying to just bring a little bit of black in but still bring, still have a decent bit of that red there. Tuscan red because we need that to start adding in some more of these sort of shadow areas like we've got on the nose. We're just going to bring a bit of black just in this outer layer. I didn't realise till then that I actually left this spot in here without the black around this top area of the fringe, but I just put a little bit of black in this spot. So um, now I guess I need to work that in, as you all know. When you make a mistake, you just work it in. But in some ways I need to bring the black into those areas because of the fact that... Oh well I guess I don't have to fully bring the black in, I guess I got an idea. Okay so we just want really light black shadows in there. But we do want to bring the black in across these tips but we want to keep the, the reddish shadows in here. So we just want light shades of black in there, in that spot. Same for here, we don't really want the black coming down into those spots, but we do want the, the red kind of there. At the top, skimming the top. But we'll bring the black down into here just because we sort of want some of the black in that area. Some of these areas I think I was thinking of keeping the red in those spots but it seems like now um, just because of the way it's done some of those areas need to be turned to shadows, some areas can keep a bit of that reddish colour to them but yeah other bits need to be turned to some of the darkish shadowish areas of the lion skin tone in my opinion.
So we're back. Fortunately, I was watching it and noticed that the camera battery died, so we didn't miss anything. So we're just still going in with our black PC935. And as you know, we're sort of bringing our black into some of these shadow areas, but not into all of them. Like we're bringing it over the top of this and leaving some red in these um, little antennae sort of or butterfly sort of areas so that you can sort of see the difference there a bit better and some black into these sort of areas so because this is mostly dark we'll probably bring the black into to all of this when you come back from the other side too and we want to bring the black all the way down on this outside area And then we're bringing it across, leaving some red in those little frill areas. And then this final one here, yeah, we want to bring the black down into this one. And we want our black across here. around here this probably isn't really explaining it too much because it's just basically that so I'll probably just probably just better to sort of show you a bit but pretty much we're just bringing our blacks all along these sort of areas that require the black and it looks like I've gone over the edge of that one there into the pointy bit. So I'm doing this one more zoomed out just because of all the details and how wide it is kind of thing just so that you can sort of see every area as I do it. Well you can't see the bits where the cloth's covering but obviously we're not colouring in those spots whilst that's happening. coming up on this outside area and some of these areas where it's all dark we're adding in our black tones and I haven't done very well here with filling in between those spikes I'm going over the lines a lot today but I guess there's nothing I can really do about that still leave some red here so that when we bring our red back over our black and that it'll all sort of work in more so we are still trying to get that reddish blackish undertone
nearly done with her black area. I know on the, the nose we didn't use the black bit so much in it, but I kind of felt I wanted to add the blackish, um, reddish colour around these parts because I felt that that would kind of work in more with bringing those blackish reddish tones into the back main areas kind of thing, if that makes sense. I'm not explaining that very well. Basically, these all these little back gaps between the leafy sort of lion's main areas. I want to bring the blackish red in behind those. It basically is. And there's our black. So now we're going to come back in with our Tuscan Red PC 937 and we kind of want to recolor that over all the black and bring the Tuscan Red more into some of these other areas where it was wasn't before not too much still leaving some of our lighter tones but still deepening up our tuscan red in a lot of those areas or at least kind of blending the it's also a way of just blending in the black and the Tuscan red as well together. It is.
Okay, now to do these top area. We've already got a pretty flat pencil. Whoops, and I keep really going over the lines with this one. I've got to stop. <sighs> Breathe. Breathe and relax. I'm kind of nervous because I keep going over the lines, so... Yeah. I'm just going to colour over that one because I've already pretty much gone completely over it with the colouring. Same with this one. I've already pretty much gone completely over it so I'm just going to colour over it. more going over the lines and making more mistakes though because I am tense about making the mistakes. I am. Yeah see I just did it again. I keep going over every area that I could possibly go over. I keep accidentally colouring over it and it, it's driving me insane and I'm trying not to say anything and yeah I'm getting really kind of tense about all the mistakes I'm making. So I just need to breathe and relax. I'm just going to colour over that one too since I've already done it. Now yeah, what we're going to come in with is a burnt ochre PC943 and we want to bring that up I'm not going to be too worried about going into the the black areas so much just because we don't want to change them too much from the blackish red but you can bring it a bit into the reds and some areas won't have as much of the color tones as others I'm sure just because they are such small color tone areas I probably really should have been using a sharp point with this, but as you all know, I don't like to waste my pencil by sharpening it when it's not needed yet. Well, it's needed, but I don't want to sharpen it yet. But yeah.
what I'm just going to do actually, because I'm running out of time and we can bring it back in on the other bits again after, I'm pretty much going to bring in our Mineral Orange PC1033 and I'm just going to bring that in over all these um, ochre brown parts. We'll bring in the ochre brown and continue the rest of the parts next time but I just want to bring in this orange now whilst I'm here and yeah going over the lines again great relax it's all okay this is what I sometimes have to do to myself when I start getting uptight about going over the lines <laughs> sorry I just did it again it doesn't help when I don't have sharpened, fully sharpened pencils, but I don't want to sharpen it again and waste a whole heap of lead, as you all know. So that's something I'm always commenting about, is wasting the lead on these pencils because they're so expensive. And so I'll regularly try and do it with a non-sharp lead because of the fact I don't want to waste them because they're so expensive. So we're just bringing our mineral orange through some of these. There is an uh, just went over the pencil colour again. I'm just going to do one of the fill in parts there just to get it done since I went over it. Fortunately, that's one of the colours that'll go in those areas, but it still frustrates me to no end when I do it. And I might just leave it at that. I know it's not completely done. I know it doesn't look completely done, but I'm going to leave it at that just because I'm running out of time. We'll come back to continuing this part and around this cheek next time. And if we have time, maybe the eyes. And yeah, I think I'll leave it at that and I will see you next time. Bye.